Hi, this is a great topic. I'm very excited to talk about it as part of the K-12 online conference and excited that I've been accepted to do this. Um, it's, such a, it's such a joy to have this as one of the topics that is of interest in the education field right now. So my name's Jackie, oops, my name's Jackie Gerstein and I have a byline that says I don't do the teaching for a living, I live teaching as my doing and technology has amplified my passion for doing so. And a little bit more about me in terms of why this is such an important topic to me, for me. I didn't come from a traditional teacher background, I actually started off in outdoor and experiential education which really is in line with maker, the maker movement and maker education and really does affect my mindset about it and how I approach it and that's what the, the topic of interest in this uh, presentation is going to be about. But this is just a little bit about me in terms of I just love developing new curriculum and testing new things out with learners and using hands-on whole body activity and especially controlled chaos where all the learners are doing something and it's not me instructing them, it's them instructing each other, instructing me. And this is all in line with the maker movement and maker mindset. So a little bit of background and this presentation really is more about the educator and the, edu and the mindset that comes with an educator who wants to approach maker education in either formal or informal settings, could be school after school. But Dale Dotterty, so I wanted to give you a little background before we jumped into the, the, these characteristics of an educator with a maker mindset. And Dale Dotterty, who is credited for really pushing the maker movement, this is a great quote. It says, when a kid builds a model rocket or a kite or a birdhouse, she not only picks up math, physics, and chemistry along the way, she also develops her creativity, resourcefulness, planning abilities, curiosity, engagement with the world around her. What I've asked educators for years and now um, even more than ever is really to examine what the purpose of education and learning is and why we became teachers, what we want, the legacies we want to leave students after they've been in our classrooms, in our learning environments. So before I jump in and discuss the educator with the maker mindset, I just wanted to show you that we're in this perfect storm for maker education and give you a little bit of background on that. And I really don't like the word perfect storm, but it works. It's really the perfect gift because we have all these really amazing variables and things going on that um, make it right for maker education. So um, I created this uh, infographic and then I put it into ThingLink and ThingLink's a great little tool that has a way to link into into other resources and I'll put this as part of the uh, links that I provide with this presentation. So the first variable is information access and abundance education institution and educators are no longer the gatekeepers of, uh, of information. Content of all types, all kinds can be found on the internet. I don't know of a single topic that can't be found on the internet. And so we're living in this great time that's information abundance and, I, and that really rocks. That's really exciting for me. So I'm just showing you how they link into um, different, different web pages. We're living in a world of information abundance, surplus, and access. The result is synergy whereby the human mind plus our con current technologies far exceed the sum of these individual parts. We have technology to access any type of information and to create products that match the pictures and voices in our minds. And we can use technology to get assistance and feedback about <coughs> our creations from folks around the globe. Perfect for maker education and should be the norm in schools. Related to that are this open source movement and the one that I really want to point out that's very cool is Thingiverse and Thingiverse is a 3D printing. This is a car that was 3D printed uh, and um, people are putting their open source their plans and um, blueprints online so that people could download them, try them themselves and improve and put it back online which actually improves, improves the product and helps everybody out which is directly related to this 
crowdsourcing and participatory culture that we're in so that people are sharing um, due to information abundance and open source and then the, then it becomes crowdsource and again making the world of, and information and products so much better with the synergy involved and related and just other things that make the perfect storm some discussions about maker movement um, the do-it-yourself movement which we know is um, people again having these cheap resources and information online or being able to make it themselves affordable technologies where we have um, which really is cool things like Arduinos and Makey Makeys and little bits so that these tech tools that used to cost, cost mucho dinero are now affordable to the average consumer even the price of 3D printers are going down and finally, the focus on STEAM or STEM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, and that focus being in the school. So with all these variables together, we are entering this, this really amazing time that educators really should be taking advantage of to create this 21st century learners and learning environment. So I'm going to show you a short clip. Making means to me look like having fun. We have a vision at Maker Egg of every child a maker. It's both a recognition of the childhood status as makers. We are born makers making meaning, language, connections. It's a natural state of being. We are holding this event to help remind people of the importance of bringing out those opportunities for expression. I'm hoping to find new pieces of curriculum that I can bring into my science classroom. There's all these little activities that can take basic scientific principles and turn them into concrete objects that they've made themselves. Making gives kids a chance to learn how to troubleshoot, um, and oftentimes the process of figuring out where you've gone wrong can help them understand the basic scientific principles much better, and especially when it comes to girls, it's so often that when a girl makes a mistake, we just swoop in and fix it for her, and while we let the boys, you know, tinker and, you know, realize where they've gone wrong and make corrections themselves, and I think that it just sinks in so much better, and there's a much deeper level of understanding once they've actually built it with their own hands. My favorite thing about Maker um, Ed is that all the cool uh, robotic things and how things like that can help you and be just like cool things that you don't see normally every day. I think making is like, great for especially for girls because it can show that they can also do things. My favorite thing about making is that you can make stuff that sometimes you didn't know that it was possible. For me, making uh, helped me find where I'm supposed to be because I realized this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm meant to do. So, what well, the rest of this presentation is going to focus on this maker mindset. And here's another quote from Dale, who you saw in the video. Fostering the maker mindset through education is a fundamentally human project to support the growth and development of another person, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Learning should focus on the whole person. So, for me, the only way that maker education can be successful in any educational setting is that it has to begin with the educator. It, it begins with the educator really understanding and approaching education from this mindset. But given that, as I started off the presentation, that many educators have been trained in traditional sense, they get stuck in these shoulds. Teachers should be the content experts. Teachers should lecture and directly instruct to the learners for them to learn. I had a teacher once, and she was a pretty young teacher who I was doing a workshop with and saying, I don't think I'm teaching unless I'm standing up in front of the room lecturing. Teachers should know all of the answers. This idea of saying, I don't know, or we'll find out together just as foreign to a lot of teachers again because of their traditional training. Teachers should ensure that there are predictable outcomes for student learning. This is very true with uh, No Child Left Behind and Race to the Top is that there's these really measurable objectives and learning should be predictable and students should re reach these objectives. Teachers should ensure that the classroom is quiet and that students are attending to the teacher. Again, I. I used to get, I told you about in the beginning how I like controlled chaos in the classroom and I'd have my students loud but they'd be 
learning and they'd be interacting and they would be focused on the the content we cover we'd be covering but I often hear knocks on my door um, the teacher next door wants you to be quiet please teachers should never make mistakes especially in front of the students we know that and finally teachers should be the sole assessors and evaluators of, of student work but if teachers are serious about really embracing maker education and which really translates into being an educator for for the 21st century then it might mean developing a new mindset new roles and new skills so it's my belief that maker the maker education the maker movement is determined by the educator and that may, any a lot of teachers make in the classroom you know like the templates for for thanksgiving turkeys but that's really not in the realm and flavor of maker education and that it becomes the teacher's mindset that really sets up a climate for maker education. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. There's no judgment. It's just information. And I'm going to ask you to make three different, one of three different responses. Yes, no, or I don't care. I don't care meaning it's not an important, uh, important variable for you in the classroom. And as we go through these, think of one or two that you'd like to focus on this year in your teaching practices and develop more in terms of that element of becoming a maker educator. So first of all, do your learners produce as much or more of their learning content as they consume? Now and again in these days of information abundance and uh, access of almost student self-directed learning of content online, the students should be producing a lot of their materials, learning materials, content information, and a lot more than I believe than they should be consuming it. Do your learners work harder than you during meeting times? This is an important one for me. Do you look in a classroom? If I look in any classroom and I see the teacher standing in front of the class, it's obvious he or she's doing most of the work, and it really should be the students that they're giving you their time and they should be the one doing ones doing the work during class time. Does the physical setting of your classroom reflect an information rich, connected, participate, participatory, creative culture? So you could tell again walking into any classroom how the desks are arranged, how the how the students are interacting, if it's um, set up for that type of interaction. Is your classroom an open portal open to people, visitors, social networks? I talk about Skype in the classroom and global connections and even um, having experts come in face to face or virtually in other classrooms, uh, parents. So it really should be a very dynamic interactive space. Do you assist your learners in finding, joining, and interacting with their own personal learning networks to find their own online and face to face tribes? I think most, a lot of us, especially as adults, have our own interest groups I do pottery and there's running groups and music groups and they're really important part of um, skill development and interest driven education and some kids are good at it and some aren't but I think it should be a strategic um, intentional practice in the classroom do you encourage your learners to explore what could be in addition to what is the current curriculum is a lot of learning what already has been learning of facts and knowledge Instead of imagining what a future could be, um, are we what what space exploration is going to be, what medicine is going to be, what the arts is going to be, and having that again be part of your classroom uh, instructional strategies. Have you and your learners developed creative methods for finding, gather, and gathering resources? Uh, th this young man, this was their setting to a story that they were fictional story they were writing, and as you could see. There's very no-cost materials here. Do you focus as much or more on the process of learning as the products and outcomes? Uh, get, she's learning how to set up this little chemistry lab. And for me, that's, that's really the important element here. 
Your learners interact more with each other, students, professionals, web materials, and hands-on materials than with you. That's related to several of the questions we just asked. Again, taking that time that they meet face to face to really let them interact with one another, other with the web, with materials. Do you set a climate for learners to be kind, concerned, passionate, and compassionate? I strongly believe that that every class and and school year should start with community building because again, all these are interconnected and interdependent, and they'll be more willing to collaborate, share resources, make together if that if this type of environment is set up. Do you not only build community, but also allow it for independence, individuality, uniqueness of thought? Part of maker education is uh, people learning to put themselves into their projects. Do you encourage student voice in all its forms, speech, writing, drawings, and media creation? I believe that um, speaking and writing is for many people, not their first language. Some it's the arts, some it's um, body ec body movement. So to allow students and give them the tools and opportunities to express themselves in a variety of ways. Do you and your students normalize failure and mistakes, considering them part of the learning process? Uh, this young man was trying to build a mechanical arm, failed terribly, but we nobody made a big deal of it, and he just he just went with the flow because that was the expectation that experimentation and failure mistakes are just part of the process. To use authentic assessments that provide ongoing and continuous feedback to learners about their performance. A lot of the maker and STEAM and STEM activities are actually built in uh, assessments. They work or they don't work. And, but you could also build in and should build in peer reviews and, and online type of assessments. Do you set up the conditions for your learners to be great? For me, this is the most important. This young man, Peyton, just kind of hated his regular classroom. Not hated it, he just kind of was checked out. And then I had him in gifted class um, one day a week, and he built this solar Ferris wheel, and the other kids would walk by and see it move and just really be in awe of him. And he was great, and I think all of, us, all of our students should have opportunities to be great during our classes. So which one of these one or two ideas do you want to try to be, as you begin integrating maker education? Why don't you share that with some colleagues and become support with one another? That can make it more powerful. <clears throat> Excuse me. What that translates then is into some different roles. And this is a thing link. Again, I'll provide some links so that you can access this. But these are some of the roles that the educator as a maker educator cater has. And you'll see, you can just re review them here, but my favorite is lead learner now in these days, again, of open edu open information and, and open web. And it now the educator shouldn't be the content deliverer or the content expert. They should show the process of learning, which also means learning new things in front of the students and showing them and explaining to them the process of how you as the educator learn new things. And finally, as I said, the educator as a maker learner, um, as a lead learner, I just want to conclude with um, this reflective piece that the educator could direct his or her own learning and show and reflect on these questions as well as share these qu reflective questions after um, sessions of maker educations with the students. I'm pointing out the two that I find most important. Did I play and have fun? And did I learn anything new? And finally, um, this little quote. I like to reinvent um, this old quote into the modern day. Have me watch a video I forget. Ask me to do an online interactive I remember. Let me produce and create I learn. And as part of this, there's just some resources I'd like to point out to you. I have an ebook that I've compiled all my blog posts. Uh, I have, a, again, a lot of blog posts on this. So if you just want to access them online, just tag Maker Education under User Generated Education. You'll find all my blog posts. Sylvia and Gary's book, Invent to Learn, is, has some very good information. And I also put it together a Pinterest board of just activities that could be done in the classroom. So I want to thank you for watching this and I hope you just try some in your classroom. We're just it's just ripe for this exciting time of maker education. Thanks again. Bye.